The excretory system removes excess materials from our body fluids and help maintain internal chemical homeostasis, a process known as osmoregulation, which I cover in my animal form and function video. Animals excrete three different forms of nitrogenate wastes. Many aquatic animals excrete ammonia, which is highly soluble, highly toxic, and requires low energy expenses. Being highly toxic, ammonia only works well for many aquatic species. Most terrestrial animals, like mammals, excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of urea, which is less soluble in water, less toxic, but energetically more expensive than ammonia. Reptiles, birds, and insects excrete uric acid in order to conserve water. Uric acid is a semi-solid paste, insoluble in water, relatively non-toxic, but even more energetically expensive than urea. Humans can also generate a small amount of uric acid from purine breakdown. An excess amount of uric acid causes gout, which is a painful joint inflammation. Most marine invertebrates excrete waste through direct exchange with their environment. Flatworms and rotifers use protonephridia, or networks of dead-end tubules connected to external openings. The smallest branches of the network are capped by a cellular unit called a flame bulb. Earthworms use metanephridia, which consists of open-ended tubules that collect salomic fluid and produce dilute urine for excretion. Insects and other terrestrial arthropods use malpifian tubules, which remove nitrogenous waste from the hemolymph and function in osmoregulation. Vertebrate excretion and osmoregulation involves nephrons, which are functional units of kidneys. Each kidney is supplied with blood by a renal artery and drained by a renal vein. The renal nerves regulate kidney activities. The renal pelvis transfers urine from kidneys to the bladder. The kidney has two distinct regions, an inner renal medulla and an outer renal cortex. Juxtamedullary nephrons have loops of Henle that descends into the renal medulla, whereas cortical nephrons are confined to the renal cortex. Now I'm going to walk through the steps that takes place in the nephron. Blood enters the kidney through the renal artery and passes through the afferent arterial and enters the glomerulus capillaries. Hydrostatic pressure forces fluid from the blood in the glomerulus to the lumen of Bowman's capsule, which consists of podocytes that non-selectively filters the blood. The filtrate contains salts, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, nitrogenous waste, and other small molecules. Blood then flows to the efferent arterial, which branches into the peritubular capillaries that serve the proximal and distal tubules, and the phasa recta, which serves the loops of Henle. After reabsorption and secretion, the blood then leaves the kidney through the renal veins. The first step of reabsorption and secretion occurs at the proximal tubule. Sodium chloride and nutrients are transported actively from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid and then capillaries. Water, bicarbonate, and potassium ion are transported passively. Hydrogen ion, ammonia, and toxins are secreted into the filtrate. Overall, more stuff are reabsorbed into the blood, so the filtrate volume decreases. The proximal tubule contributes to the pH balance in our blood. Next, the filtrate enters the descending loop of Henle, in which water is reabsorbed from the filtrate to the interstitial fluid through channels known as aquaporins. The filtrate becomes increasingly concentrated. In the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, salt bana water is reabsorbed from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid. The transfer of salt occurs passively at the inner medulla and actively at the outer medulla. The filtrate becomes increasingly dilute. The ascending limb of the loop of Henle is important in maintaining medulla osmolarity, which will be talked about in a moment. In the distal tubule, salt, bicarbonate, and water are reabsorbed into the interstitial fluid, whereas potassium ions and hydrogen ions are secreted into the filtrate. The distal tubule is important in regulating the blood's pH balance and blood osmolarity through the antidiuretic hormone, which decreases blood osmolarity by increasing water reabsorption. The distal tubule also plays a role in the regulation of the blood volume and pressure through the RAAS, which stands for 
renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Aldosterone stimulates salt and water reabsorption in distal tubule, increasing blood volume and blood pressure. The collecting duct carries filtrate through the medulla to the renal pelvis. Some salts, water, and urea are reabsorbed into the interstitial fluid, and the filtrate becomes more concentrated. The urine becomes hyperosmotic to body fluids. When blood osmolarity rises, the antidiuretic hormone also increases water reabsorption in the collecting duct. The final filtrate, known as urine, flows from the renal pelvis to the urinary bladder through the ureter. Urine is ultimately excreted out of our body through the urethra. So the four steps of the excretory system consist of filtration in the Bowman's capsule, reabsorption and secretion in the proximal and distal tubule as well as the loop of Henle, and finally excretion through the urethra. The countercurrent multiplier system expends considerable amount of energy to maintain the osmotic gradient between the renal medulla and the renal cortex in order to enhance the reabsorption of water and produce concentrated urine. The system is largely driven by the loop of Henle in the juxtamedullary nephrons. The vasa recta supply the kidney with nutrients without interfering with the osmolarity gradient. Mammals that inhabit dry environments have more juxtamedullary nephrons and longer loops of Henle, which contributes to water conservation.